The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is a third-person adventure game where you run, climb, and glide from place to place, swinging the weapons you find to slay demonic enemies. You play as the character Link, who has woken up from a hundred-year coma to a post-apocalyptic world in which he must vanquish the evil and save the land. Progression is at the player's discretion and is not limited by progression gates, enabling any order of dungeons to be completed. You can even fight the final boss right after you finish the tutorial area. I've played this game for a very long time. I've sunk almost 200 hours into this game, while most other single player experiences take 20 to 30 hours for me to complete. Breath of the Wild thoroughly grips me, and in this essay I will be attempting to psychoanalyze the reasons behind my affection towards it. The biggest change from previous entries in the series is a breakable item system, where weapons, shields, and bows will break after a certain amount of uses. This game design decision is in support of Jacques Lacan's theory of lack and desire. He posited lack as the lack of being whereby the being exists, or more simply, the idea of existing when something is always missing. During my playthrough, I experienced a cycle of empowerment and alienation as I constantly lost and gained items of varying usefulness. For example, often after defeating a Lionel, I've relished in taking its awesome high-powered club, only for it to shatter a few fights later and be left with a rusty sword. Once we develop the lack, Matthew states that we enter into a chain of desire and can never truly satisfy it. My desire to maintain a stockpile of powerful weapons was constantly thwarted by the breakage system. However, I was always motivated to pursue more weapons in the hopes that my lack could be satiated. Another way that Breath of the Wild keeps the desire alive is to have the main objective always active and at the forefront of the quests throughout the game. Apart from reminding me of Link's overarching goal, it served as a reminder that something was still missing. I completed this final quest at the very end of my playthrough, experiencing almost everything there was to see beforehand. I felt so connected to the experience in my playthrough I would happily explore the world for hours and hours. My objet petit art was in sync with Link's, but Lacan states that one of the most traumatic experiences is for the subject to attain their desire. As such, my method of maintaining the illusion of wholeness was to put off the immediate attainment of desire and work towards it non-linearly. The fantasy was eventually squandered when I completed everything and had only the final boss to tackle. Upon completion, I felt accomplished, but hollow. The world was now void of desire, and I was disconnected. The game's structure is open world, and every part of it feels open along with it. As Nick Popovich discusses in his GDC talk, Breath of the Wild is very evocative of home, i.e. a place that offers low stake but meaningful rewards. The world is littered with enemy camps, vistas, mini dungeons, towers, and villages to scout out and discover which, in reference to Barbaros Bostan's work on player motivations, creates many different situations for the player to interact with. The virtual world is then created by the player, who is guided by their desire for weapons and quests, as discussed in the previous section. In this virtual world, the actions that the player can take are expanded through the numerous tools and systems given to the player. There is the physics and chemistry system, intelligent AI, the weapon breakage system, the unique abilities of the rune slate, and cooking and armor buffs. Exploring these tools was my absolute favorite part of playing, as I was able to approach similar situations with different strategies, and as a programmer, I'm fascinated with the code that powers all of it. It's caught on with other players as well, seeing the rise of the vegan run, pacifist run, and many other variations of play and speedrunning. Moving back to the diagram, the outcomes are always either success or death. Success guarantees an extrinsic reinforcer like rubies, weapons, or a chest. And for my experience, intrinsic reinforcers, like finding a new path between places or cheesing the game by doing something unintended. On the other side, death is a punisher, but only for the specific strategy or action that was used. The game autosaves constantly and always put me back to just before I did something stupid, which compelled me to experiment more often. When it came to the final quest of defeating Ganon, I was much less motivated to tackle Hyrule Castle due to its distance, size, and difficulty. The quest did provide a better long-term outcome, but the short-term rewards of the open world were much more attractive to me. During my playthrough, I learned of the types of consequences of play that the game provided, and I was able to form incentives for exploring. The game set up these outcomes well and encouraged me to take actions that would lead to the desired outcome. Breath of the Wild is a very rewarding game. It kept me from attaining desire and motivated me to be creative in my exploration. I very much enjoyed playing it. Thanks for watching. <laughs>